Number 36. Construct your own problem. Consider the tension in an elevator cable. During the time the elevator starts from rest and accelerates its load upward to some cruising velocity. Taking the elevator and its load to be the system of interest, draw a free body diagram. All right, then calculate the tension in the cable. Among the things to consider the mass of the elevator and its load, the final velocity and time taken to reach that velocity. So here's a little, here's a little problem, okay? I have a, an elevator here. It, let's just say it has a mass of 800 kilograms in total with all the occupants and uh, the, the elevator itself. It's, let's say, going to start at rest, and it's going to have a positive acceleration on upward at 0.5 meters per second squared. All right, so let's, let's do a couple of things. I'll frame a couple of problems uh, given this information, and we'll just solve it quickly, okay? So the first question is, um, if the elevator is at rest, okay, so at rest, at rest, what's, what's the tension uh, in the cable? What's T? What's T? I'm just going to leave it like that. At rest, what's T? So first we need a free body diagram, okay? So here is the particular point of the elevator, all right? We're gonna have a force pointing downward, correct? And what would that be? That would be the weight, right, of the elevator, okay? So there's the weight of the elevator, great. And then what's the force pointing up? Well, remember, it's, there's a cable there, okay? So if it's at rest and it's not moving at all, no acceleration, uh, that must mean that we have an equal but opposite force there, right? And that we'll call the tensional force, okay? So we can simply now take a look at the formulas, all right? So we got some of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass of the object in interest multiplied by the acceleration of that object in that same direction. So we have tension, which is positive, minus the weight of the elevator, should equal the mass of that elevator, 800, multiplied by acceleration, but it's not moving. So that whole thing cancels. Simply then add the weight of the elevator on over to the right-hand side, and we get that the tension is equal to the weight of the elevator. Now that should make sense, right? That's what we kind of expected uh, it to be. And the weight of the elevator, remember, is found by taking the mass of that elevator and multiplying it by gravity. All right, and when we do that, let's just see what we get. 800 times 9.8. 7.84, so this is 7.84 times 10 to the third newtons. Great. Now, once the elevator starts accelerating upward, what do you think is going to happen to the tension in the cable? Do you think it's going to go up or go down, and why? All right, so think about that, and let me know, well, let yourself know uh, how you did. All right, so let's now take a look at when it's accelerating. So let's draw now a free body diagram uh, actually, first, let me say, um, let me say when A is equal to 0 0.5 meters per second squared, what's T? The tension in the cable now. Okay. So again, free body diagram. Okay. What's the, um, what's the force pointing downward? Well, it's always just the mass of the object. Excuse me. It's the weight of the object, not the mass. Okay. It's the weight of the elevator. And then we're going to be met by some tension, right? There's going to be some tension in the rope pulling it up. We don't know what it is at the moment, so let's just call it T. But now we do know that there is an acceleration of this elevator on upward, okay? And that acceleration is equal to 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Great. Now let's frame our, uh, <clears throat> our, our force problem. Okay, so some of the forces in the y direction will equal the mass of the object in question multiplied by the acceleration of that object in that direction. So, what are the forces in the y? So we got a positive tension minus the weight of the elevator is equal to the mass of that elevator, which is 800 kilograms. Now we have an acceleration, so it's 0.5. Okay, so uh, why don't we... Uh, what's the weight of the elevator? I mean, we just found it before, right? That's the same as the old tension, okay? So basically, uh, what we're looking to do here is we'll add the weight of the elevator on over to the right-hand side, correct? So that we'll have tension is equal to 800 times 0 0.5, right? Then plus the weight of the elevator, which was 7.84 times 10 to the third. And now the new tension would be, and notice we're actually adding the, old, the weight to it, right? So it's actually going to be going up. So those of you who thought it might be going up were correct. 
and the math works out to be here 8.4 so we got 8.24 right 8.24 8.24 times 10 to the third and that's in terms of newtons so the tension did go up and that should make sense right if you're trying to accelerate the object on upward it's like you're pulling even harder right on the elevator the, the chain is pulling even harder the cables pulling even harder and therefore the tension in that cable should be going up all right, so that kind of makes sense. Now I can ask you anything I want as far as, uh, you know, velocities, final velocities, times, this and that. Um, it depends on what, how I want to frame the question. So let me now ask, um, I don't know. Why don't we say what's, what's the final velocity after a 10 second ride? Okay, so what do we know? We know the elevator is starting out initially. We know the acceleration of the elevator is 0.5, right? Um, what else do we know? Um, we know the time now, right? I said 10 seconds. We don't know the final velocity, and we don't know the distance it would, it would cover. So we have to think of a formula that relates these uh, four things together. And if you remember back to the prior chapter, chapter 3, we have the final velocity equaling the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So the final velocity will be equal to zero plus the acceleration of 0.5 multiplied by the time, 10 seconds. So the final velocity here would be uh, five, right? 5.0 if we want, whatever, meters per second. That's the final velocity. Easy peasy, all right? I can then also ask you for the displacement of the object, you know, at a certain point in time. All right, uh, let, let we, you know what, even consider it in 10 seconds. How far is it going to go? 10 seconds. What formula are you going to use? We're going to use this formula, right? Change in displacement is equal to, oh, well, there's two equals. Sorry. Is equal to uh, the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half at squared. So change in displacement. That whole thing goes to zero because the initial velocity is zero. So I go one half times 0.5 times 10 squared, Oop, times 10 squared, right? 10 squared is 100, half of 100 is 50, half of 50 is 25. So it looks like the change in height, or I used X, but I really should have probably used Y because it's in the Y direction, but it doesn't affect all the final answer. It's still going to be 25 meters no matter what, but remember, this is really in the Y direction, all right? All right, guys, and then you can ask a couple other questions, but let's let's move on to another problem, all right? So thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and uh, please remember to subscribe. Thank you so much.